Hey everyone, today I've got a pretty interesting new AI image generator for you to check out. And it's one that I think occupies a pretty unique space. There are obviously a lot of AI image generators out there these days, and there are a lot of different people at different experience levels generating images on them. You've got beginners who have maybe just started after generating an image or two in Dolly 3 via ChatGPT, mid-journey pros who have really never stepped outside of that particular garden, and of course, you've got the full-on comfy UI wizards. Now, I don't think that everyone fits in one of those three buckets. I think that most of us are, you know, somewhere in between each of them. And that's where I think this new platform is really onto something because it serves as a great all-arounder for all skill levels. And they're really eager to hear your feedback and implement it to become a real powerhouse. Okay, let's dive in and check it out. So this is openart.ai, and in full disclosure, I did partner with them for this video, but that's actually a good thing. They pretty much gave me free reign to do whatever I want here, and they're really looking for feedback from you on what you want in an image generator. So there is no hard sell here. There is, of course, paid plans on openart.ai, but I finagled some free credits from them to give to you guys. We'll go over that when we talk about pricing. But for now, we're gonna cover three areas here, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And don't just jump to the end, you power users, because there, there's some pretty interesting stuff in the beginner and intermediate sections as well. So kicking off with beginners, although this is relevant to everyone as well, if you're just getting started, uh, you know, obviously there is a big create image button here that you can hit. That will bring up this sidebar. And probably the most important thing here and relevant to everyone is your choice of model from here. So if we hit switch, we'll be taken to all of the available models on open art. Now, as a note, they do have flux available. If you're not aware flux is, uh, well, there's a very strong argument that flux is the best image model available right now. Now, just to be fully transparent, the Flux model that's on the OpenArt platform is the standard version, but they will be getting the dev version in October. If you don't know what that means, don't, don't worry about it. Just, just find a style that you like and click on it. Let's try colors. So let's try this out with a female fantasy mage with red hair holds a glowing orb because, you know, orbs are, orbs are cool. They're great to gaze into. Uh, there is an enhanced prompt button down here as well, and if you hit that, you'll obviously end up with a much more detailed prompt. Uh, I think that if you're just getting started with prompting, this is a great way to learn kind of how models think about prompting uh, and will give you some clues and tips in terms of building your own. Uh, what I like about this too is the fact that you can actually edit this if you want to as well. So uh, let's just give this a shot and hit create. And indeed we end up with an image like this, which is pretty solid. It didn't quite get the orb, but uh, we'll look at how to fix that later on. Additionally, we did end up with this image, which I also liked very much, and uh, this image as well. Uh, fingers are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, five fingers, okay. Yeah, fingers are actually accurate here. Uh, there is some ways to enhance and fix fingers coming up as well. But let's just say we like this version as is and don't wanna do any additional work on it. Uh, all we have to do is hit the ultimate upscale button. You can then upscale this image to 2K or 4K. We're just gonna leave it at 2K. Uh, and then of course, you know, the creative upscale that we have seen in things like Magnific and uh, Crea. But an interesting thing that I haven't seen in most of those is just precise upscale, which will just take the image as is and upscale it, you know, without adding uh, additional details to it. Results wise, this is just our straight upscale and then of course our creative upscale. Another quick thing that I wanted to mention before moving out of the beginner section is that in certain models, let's just say, let's take this one, you'll have a number of different options down here for like image to image, style referencing, pose referencing, and composition referencing. So just taking a quick look at that, we're gonna take this image of our very thrifty pink wig girl. I mean, it's 25% off. She's, she's a bargain shopper and load her into image to image. By the way, we'll be taking a look at her again later on when we get to the advanced live portrait section. That is pretty cool. Back to prompting. Uh, below that, you'll see that you can actually auto generate a prompt from this image. So this uh, acts a little bit like uh, for you mid-journey users, uh, like Describe does. But unlike Describe, we can continue to tell it other things. Like in composition reference, if we load the same image in again and run this, we end up with a very similarly composed image. Not the exact image, of course, but again, why would we want to do that? Of course, if you wanted the same pose, we could use the pose reference feature and end up with an image like this, which uh, once again is now composed, uh, the same and is posed the same. It's, you know, just that this woman is not as thrifty a shopper. Post image can be really powerful, especially when applied to artistic styles, uh, such as like taking this image of 
old school Arnold as Conan the Barbarian, and then running that with a kind of like Frank Frazetta inspired fantasy prompt and ended up with this hulking monster. And yes, the ax is a little bit ridiculous, but are you gonna argue with him? Moving on to, we'll call this more the intermediate area and dropping into the flux model. Uh, let's run our old pal, uh, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. We, of course, end up with a couple of images of our guy. I mean, come on, man. You didn't iron your pants today. You knew the photo shoot was today. So we'll go with this guy, even though he did not iron his pants as well. Um, for any post-processing work, there are a number of options up here. We can do uh, in painting. Uh, we can remove objects. We can expand the canvas, obviously. We can stylize it. We can you know, change the background. And um, as we'll see in just a little bit, this is advanced live portrait. So uh, let's start by expanding the canvas out to a 16.9 image. Image. So this brings us to the edit module. And there's a lot of really kind of cool things that you can do in here. Um, so right now we're just gonna play around with changing the aspect ratio. So all I need to do is change that down to 16.9 uh, and we obviously now have a 16.9 image. Uh, I mentioned this in a previous video. One of the things that I really sort of have been having fun doing is, is sort of off composition stuff. So let's move our guy down here. I think we can probably just go without a prompt here um, and then hit create. You can also do some image guidance, um, you know, reference image stuff here as well, which is pretty neat. Um, but just running this as is, we now have a, a pretty wide angle shot of our guy in the blue business suit. Now there is some like kind of garbled faces back here, but I think that can be fixed uh, with some additional blurring, kind of creating more of a depth of field on them to, to hide that a little bit. We can continue on by adding a whole stylization onto this if we want. Uh, this is one that you gotta be a little bit on the wary side of, because it does get to be pretty wacky if you're not careful. Uh, for example, taking this kind of like, um, well, let's let's go with this Harley Quinnish kind of, uh, kind of stylization and see what happens. It's gonna be weird, I'm telling you. Yeah, that is kind of what I was expecting, but it does give you an idea of what this does. I will say that the uh, shade of lipstick really does bring out the blue suit. And just as a quick note, because we mentioned it earlier, if you hit the edit people tab here, uh, you'll have options to correct hands and enhance face. Um, our guy's hands look okay as is, so there's no need to do that. But if you did want to, you would hit correct hands here. Um, just sort of mask him real quick and then, you know, hit create. There's some other interesting stuff that you can do in the edit module, like uh, like layers, for example, by hitting the blend layers button, we can add a image layer. So we can grab this knight and sort of resize him to whatever we want. Uh, it actually auto takes out the bat. So that's the original image and I can just hide the background here. So, um, and then at this point we can, you know, essentially blend them together. So uh, if I put like fantasy warrior in front of a castle, we've now got this going on. Now, granted, did kind of lose the the night blue shade but you know we could probably add that back in hand is a little garbled here too but again we have fixed hands now before we move into advanced live portrait the last thing that i kind of want to show you in the intermediate section is uh sketch to image which where you can you know obviously take a sketch uh like this is a uh, i guess a, a living room somewhere um and uh then prompt what you want to see so we'll give it the prompt photorealistic modern living room, blue and orange tones, um, pick a style. There's a number of them here. Um, actually, let's go with uh, architecture. Sure, why not? That matches. Uh, hit create and we end up with this. So yes, it definitely got the assignment. Now it is like the wicker chairs do look a little on the shabby side, but again, this is not an upscaled image. This is just like straight out of the model. So moving on to the thing that I think a lot of you have been excited about. Uh, in my last video, I talked about advanced live portrait and yeah, uh, open art has already implemented that. So that's right there on the homepage under featured apps, change facial expression. That moves us back into edit mode again. Um, we'll drop in our 25% off wig girl. Uh, and as you can see here, it's, yeah, it's all the same stuff that we had in advanced live portrait um, called different stuff, but it's, it's the same uh, head vertical direction, head horizontal direction, uh, head side direction, uh, you know, smile, mouth, mouth wide, mouth roundness, uh, blinks and eyebrow positions. So yeah, um, let's just play around with this a little bit. So it's kind of neat. It actually does update as you change your 
uh, parameters. That was something that actually wasn't happening yesterday. So um, I guess they have been working on this. Now there's a ton of other stuff in open art that you can do as well, but I don't wanna get bogged down. But just as a quick overview, you can do image to 3D here and you can even train your own model. Yeah, you can upload between four and 128 image samples in order to train a model of your own. That said, I would highly recommend going through the documentation on the site on how to train a model. It's only like eight pages long. Um, but yeah, there are some kind of specific sizes and shot types that you're definitely going to want to train the model on, you know, once again, garbage in, garbage out. Finally, moving on to the advanced side and uh, beginners don't like tune out here because I, I think there's a lot that you can learn here. Uh, yeah, you, there's a whole section on Comfy UI workflows and you can run Comfy right here as well. So for advanced users, there is a whole section of uh, Comfy UI workflows that you guys can check out. You can even upload your own workflows if you want to. If you're sort of at the intermediate level and you've been curious about dipping your toe into Comfy UI, uh, there is Comfy UI Academy, uh, a whole series of videos hosted by our man Olivio, YouTube's own like comfy UI whisperer. Uh, honestly, I ended up learning pretty much the basics of what I know about comfy from these videos. Under workflow templates, we have a number of kind of like easy uh, comfy UI templates that you can use to learn with. But of course, if you're in powerhouse mode or if you're one of those people that just likes to dive in and just start pushing buttons, um, there's a whole section with cloud runnable workflows. So yeah, you can run all of this stuff right on uh, OpenArt. So for example, we will take this workflow, uh, Flux LoRa Upscale, uh, and then just come over and hit Launch on Cloud. And indeed, we are now running Comfy right in browser. So uh, let's just change out this prompt to a cyberpunk warrior um, and fire it away. Now, one of the reasons that I kind of caution against anybody that isn't you know, somewhat familiar with Comfy uh, with jumping right in, despite the fact that it is pretty much just write a prompt and uh, then hit Q prompt, is the fact that you may run into some errors here and there. Uh, if that does happen and you know you are completely ignoring my advice and saying like i'm just going in and playing with it um just hit refresh and and try running it again um sometimes things don't load properly and if you hit a refresh it tends to uh, work itself out that said if you do continue to get errors uh something that you can do is just look through the error log and see which one of these uh nodes the error is is happening in uh, and just start, uh, you know, flipping some values around and see what ends up happening. So, uh, but yeah, there is our cyberpunk warrior um, standing on a city street. So it's kind of an overview of openart.ai. By no means is that everything. There's like still a ton of stuff that you can discover there. But if you've made it this far, I think you can understand why I partnered with them. There really isn't any other platform that's out there that kind of has a roadmap from beginner to, you know, comfy UI. In terms of pricing, and sorry, yeah, it's not free, but I do have some bonus trial credits for you. Um, the prices run between $7 a month and $28 a month uh, if you go with the annual plan, and between $14 and $56 monthly. Now, annually is 50% off, so that's you know the one that I would recommend. Um, and then in terms of the trial, there is uh, 40 free credits, and then if you join their Discord, you get an additional 50 credits and uh, I do recommend doing so. There's a lot of great information there as well. And hey, bonus 50 credits. And if you hit my link, which is credits backslash theoretically media, you will get an additional 50 credits on top of that, something I negotiated for you guys. Yeah, I'm always trying to look out for you. I know that there are a lot of these services at this point and that monthly cost can rack up. So anytime that I can score you some free stuff, I will. Finally, after going through this whole video and maybe spending a little bit of time on open art, uh, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see on this platform. They are definitely going through the comments and they are really interested in getting your feedback so you know they can implement those ideas. So yeah, let me know what you think and what can be improved. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.